consider what gender you are. My guess is most of you haven't. In our society, gender is assigned to people at birth like names. The doctor looks between a baby's legs, says if they're male or female, and usually it isn't given a second thought. This system doesn't work as perfectly as most people seem to think. Even from infancy, there are people who don't fit into these binary categories. Physically, sex is still a spectrum. There are people born with ambiguous genitals, and they're usually given surgery to correct them before they are old enough to consent. Then, later in life, there are people who, aren't, who don't fit into the definition of the sex they are assigned. How many people do you know that fit perfectly into the definition of masculine or feminine? Have you ever really stopped to question where these definitions come from? Society likes to gender everything, from objects to products to writing. We've come some ways with gender clothing, but still, most articles are considered masculine or feminine. In our culture in America, it's considered feminine to wear a skirt. And so if somebody that looks typically masculine wears one, they face ridicule and are even in danger of assault. There's nothing feminine about a skirt, it's just how our society chose to define it, but many other societies define it as masculine or neutral. Scottish men wore kilts, which is a type of skirt, but many people are hesitant to admit that because even the word skirt is so associated with femininity. To sell more products, a lot of companies will cater to a specific gender. For example, masculine power yogurt meant to give you abs and attract women. <laughs> or special big pens in pastel colors, specifically for women, as if women couldn't use normal pens. <laughs> we promote these stereotypes that certain products, colors, and designs are gender specific from a young age. We condition these gender stereotypes into children, and it ends up painting the way they see the world. Even in writing, specific prose is considered masculine or feminine. If a rhyme scheme ends on a stress syllable, it's considered masculine, and if it doesn't, it's considered feminine. This makes absolutely no sense, because being a certain gender doesn't make you lean towards a specific rhyme scheme. I'm guessing most people in the audience don't even know how to write a rhyme scheme, never mind what syllable it ends on. Even in our fiction, we gender robots and aliens and try to stick them into our preconceived notions of what men and women look and act like. There's no reason a robot or an alien would need breasts. Robots don't have young to feed, and it's doubtful aliens would fit, would be so humanoid, or be mammals. I've seen lizard aliens with breasts, and reptiles lay eggs, so breasts are completely redundant. <laughs> sexualization of the female body, but that is not a topic I'm going to be getting into. Other cultures in our world have developed gender systems that are bigger and more complex than the binary, so it's not that far-fetched a concept. Many Native American tribes have adopted the idea of two-spirit people. There are often people who are assigned male at birth and just show traits that were typically considered feminine. They took on the social roles of both males and females in the society, and sometimes took male lovers. The Hedras of India were considered to be gender neutral and were made up of transgender people, eunuchs, and intersex people. They dressed in a typically feminine style and usually wore a lot of makeup. They were influential in India until the British came and outlawed eunuchs as criminals. In Sulawesi, Indonesia, there are five accepted genders. There are males, females, and excuse me if I pronounce this wrong, Kalawai, Kalabai, and Bisu. Their genders are based off sex and social role. Someone assigned male at birth can't become female in their society, but they can identify as Calibi. Basically, Calibi and Calibi take on the social roles of the sex they were not assigned at birth, and Bisu are intersex people. The definition of gender is dependent on what society people live in and is a complete social construct. We define what gender is and what constitutes its aspects of it. Gender has come a long way, and the road to a more inclusive system has been paved by people who don't conform to the binary system and or what they are assigned at birth. There are a lot of genders I hope will become accepted in mainstream society. These genders are very important because they are defined by the people who fit into them. Gender queer is a blanket term for all people who don't fit into one of the binary genders. Gender queer people can be both, neither, or a combination of different genders. Gender fluid people identify as two or more genders, but switch between them, meaning they're usually only one at one time. A gender, gender neutral people don't have a gender. These are just a few of the definitions because I don't actually have time to name them all. But it's important people know about this because ignorance breeds hate. 
and the hate towards gender non-conforming people is an epidemic. This is a human rights issue that has been largely left in the dust. Trans people face higher murder rates, suicide rates, and rates of hate crimes, mainly because people don't understand gender and its complexities. 41% of trans people have attempted suicide, which isn't surprising, seeing as the majority have faced bullying and harassment at school and or the workplace, have had their family refuse to speak with them or spend time with them, have experienced sexual or physical abuse, and have been discriminated against by police and or healthcare workers. When I say majority, I mean over 50%. Understanding matters because otherwise people misunderstand. There are lots of people, for instance, who think gender identity and sexuality are the same thing when they're not. Few topics inspire such critical thinking, so why not teach gender in schools so more people understand it and people who don't fit into what they are assigned at birth don't feel so alienated? As Leela Alcorn said right before she committed suicide, the only way I will rest in peace is if one day transgender people aren't treated the way I was. They're treated like humans with valid feelings and human rights. Gender needs to be taught about in schools the earlier the better. The sooner we take action against the injustice trans community faces, the fewer people will feel the only way out for them is suicide. Leela's parents could have prevented Leila's death could have been prevented if her parents had shown understanding, and it breaks my heart knowing the number of people who are forced into such a dark place by the people meant to care for them. My favorite poet, Andrea Gibson, is genderqueer, and if I ever show a video of them performing, immediately I get asked, are they male or female? I'm here to say, it doesn't matter. Stop trying to fit people and to define people and fit them into your boxes. Let people just be. Gender is something unique and different to everyone who experiences it. Support and understanding mean everything. I challenge you to not be a bystander in this issue. Thank you. Yeah.